the truth behind the betrayal by the main antagonist of Three Body Problem, set in China during the Cultural Revolution in 1960s. Young Yuanjia, like many of her peers, is driven by idealism and a desire to contribute her talents to a noble cause. She embodies kindness, responsibility, gratitude, and unwavering adherence to her beliefs and principles. However, Ye's father is persecuted for his commitment to scientific ideals, and Ye's mother and sister betray him, ultimately leading to his tragic demise. Ye witnesses all of these herself, the loss of her family, and the uncertainty of the madness surrounding her leave an indelible scar of mistrust toward humanity on her young psyche. Ye's experiences are emblematic of the era's turmoil, treated as insignificant. She is sent to a village for labor reform. It is there that she meets a journalist, by Mulan, borrowing an English original Silent Spring from him, which sparks her rational contemplation of evil. She comes to understand that the relationship between mankind and evil is like that of the ocean and the icebergs floating upon it. Both are composed of the same substance, with the icebergs being merely a small, recognizable part of the vast whole. The notion that human nature is inherently tainted and that salvation must come from external forces begins to take root in Ye's mind. Gradually, Yi develops a clandestine affection for Bai. She tends to his frostbitten hands, assists with laundry, and offers to help him copy a letter based on her trust in him. However, she does not realize that the letter involves dangerous and sensitive words, which pushes Yi into the abyss of darkness. Her trust is shattered when Bai, in a bid to save himself, betrays her by falsely incriminating her as the writer of the letter. The revelation leaves Yi shocked, grief-stricken, and disillusioned, her once bright spirit now a blade of bitterness. She realizes that Bai, like her mother, is driven by self-interest and opportunism. It feels like she's reliving the anguish of her family's betrayal, descending into silent despair akin to her father's fate. Branded with disgrace, Yi is imprisoned, offered a chance for leniency by the Inquisitor. She refuses to sign a document implicating her father in crimes he didn't commit. Yi chooses to stand as a fighter of ideals and truth, much like her father before her. Enraged, the Inquisitor douses her with water, leaving her feeling as if the universe were one big piece of ice. Red Coast Base serves as a clandestine military facility dedicated to astronomical observations and scientific research. Two senior cadres, Yang Weining, the chief engineer and Lei Zhijin, the political commissar, have a long-standing friendship with the Yi family, prompting them to rescue Yi from prison and transfer her to Red Coast. In this place, she accepts the isolated life without hesitation. Disappointment in human nature leaves her with no attachment to the outside world and makes her hesitant to accept goodwill from others again. Yes, professional scientific literacy and excellent observation skills catch Lei's attention, which earns her a job in technology. This marks her first real job, where she believes she can prove her worth as a scholar. Immensely conscientious, she works through meal times, gradually shedding the haze of her heavy past. Lei insists on promoting Yi to a core position despite Yang's objections. She maintains the right attitude, focusing solely on her job of maintenance and avoiding political entanglements. He says to her in a pleasant manner that he hopes she will soon gain the trust of the organization and will soon be recognized as Comrade Yi Wenjie. This brings tears of joy to Ye's eyes, longing for acceptance from a collective. She is grateful for the trust, a luxury she has not dared to imagine in this era. Growing more hardworking, she familiarizes herself with her duties while learning programming and collecting information from detected satellites. As he becomes involved in Red Coast's core work, Lei reveals the base's top secret to her. The true purpose of Red Coast is to search for alien civilizations. This ignites Ye's passion for scientific exploration and ideals, through which her life gains meaning. She is tasked with programming the language for contacting aliens and listening for responses. Despite years passing without a response, Yi remains undeterred in her research. After forming a family with Yan, she appears to live a quiet life, but the old wounds in her heart still ache. Reading numerous foreign materials and philosophical works, she deepens her understanding of human nature's evil. Her thoughts on the madness of evil reach theoretical heights, plunging her into a deep spiritual crisis. As an idealist, she seeks to dedicate her talents to a grand goal, yet now feels that her past efforts were meaningless. Having experienced despair and pain, she feels compelled to reshape the world. In the midst of such a profound crisis, she receives a reply from the Trisolarans the first alien civilization to respond. For this, she has waited for eight years. 
At this moment, excitement, shock, nervousness, and a myriad of complex emotions flood her heart. This may be the new ideal she can tirelessly fight for. However, with the message decoded, the Trisolaran kindly warns humans not to make a reply. Yi is also acutely aware that if she responds, Earth's location will be exposed, inviting invasion upon mankind's home. At this critical juncture, the fate of the human race rests in Ye's hands. For the first time, she feels the power to control the destiny. The moment she learns of the extraterrestrial civilization, she finds a cause she can dedicate her life to. She may not understand the Trisolarans, but she is intimately acquainted with hell, a hell that is rotten to the core. Could it possibly get any worse? Therefore, he pays no heed to the warning, let alone informing anyone of the news. Instead, she deliberately conceals everything and meticulously prepares her reply. The fate of human civilization rests on these two slender fingers. Without hesitation, she presses the launch button and responds, Come here. I will help you conquer this world. Our civilization is no longer capable of solving its own problems. We need your force to intervene. Thus, a new idealism is born and put into action. She will punish human evil with the aid of the Trisolarans. She has found a cause to dedicate herself to, and she doesn't care about the price she has to pay, whether it's her own or someone else's. Lei also finds an alien signal has been received, but doesn't yet know that Yi has responded. Lei threatens and confronts Yi, rebuking her for the severity of her intention to respond. He also brings up her father's crimes, his words striking at the scars in Ye's heart. Finally, Yi realizes that Lei's care, promotion, and protection were all fake. All he has done is to covet her credit so that he could be the first to discover an alien civilization. Despite Lei's words, Ye's face remains calm, a blandness and indifference that see through the evils of human nature. This reinforces her betrayal of humanity and defection to the alien civilization. For the sake of her new ideal, he not only meticulously plans Lei's murder but even inadvertently killed her husband, Yang. Even at the inception of this new plan, she is acutely aware that all mankind will pay an unprecedented sacrifice for this cause. Two human lives, a small sacrifice in her grand plan, constitute the earliest price of this ideal and its original sin. Yet, he remains frighteningly calm. Shortly after Yang's death, their daughter is born, and during her days of recuperation in a village, Yi experiences the warmth of home. This period of time melts out a clear lake on the ice field of her mind, but after the conclusion of the Cultural Revolution and her vindication, Ye's warmth does not last long. When she meets her mother and the three Red Guards who persecuted her father, she hopes for an end to the events of the Cultural Revolution, believing in the power of goodness and human nature to dissolve the past betrayal and hatred. However, no one repents, and everyone prefers to forget those things and move on with their lives, which completely disappoints Ye. People not only commit evil without scruples, but also refuse to acknowledge their own wrongdoing. Even when everything has been exposed to the light of day, they still try to avoid culpability, using the evil of others as an excuse, shamelessly seeking comfort and ease. Since human nature seems irredeemable, Yi believes even more strongly that external help is needed. In her mind, the small hope that had just appeared for society evaporates like dew under the scorching sun, and any doubt about the super-betrayal that she has already committed vanishes without a trace. The introduction of a higher civilization from the universe into the world of mankind finally becomes Ye's unwavering ideal. Yi Wenjie, the main antagonist in the story of the Three Body, the Supreme Commander, and spiritual leader of ETO, is thus born. But why can the Trisolarans save Earth's civilization? Yi Wenjie, who does not understand the alien civilization at all, holds a rather naive idealist belief. If they are able to cross the universe and come to our world, it means that their science has already reached a fairly high level, and a society with such advanced science is bound to have higher civilization and moral standards. From the time he appears on the scene, she has appeared as a victim. Her father was killed, her mother betrayed her, and he herself was subjected to rounds and rounds of planting, framing, persecution, and discrimination. But we must not forget that she has always been an idealist. Like many young people at that time, he once dreamed that the ideal world would definitely come. But the misfortunes around her, especially the injustices she personally experienced, made her realize that her previous idealism was problematic. The disillusionment of her ideals caused her to experience a great spiritual emptiness, but she did not become a mediocre and return to her daily life. 
the fact that she can walk into the Red Coast base without hesitation, even at the cost of ending up there, indicates that she is not succumbing to her fate, but rather seeking a new ideal. The reply from the Trisolarans provides a place for this new ideal to materialize. Once it is birthed, she throws herself into the Earth Trisolaris movement with the same zeal as others throw themselves into the Cultural Revolution. She's not bad, she's not stupid, she's just obsessed with her ideals. Thanks for joining Zombies Cat on this movie. Abduct the subscribe button, hit the bell, and stay me out of this world. Until next time, keep those reels rolling. Zombies Cat signing off.